Hey, hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. We just arrived to Ang Thong, which is right in central, right in the heart of Thailand. We're on our way today for lunch to eat at a place called Pad Thai Balek, which is a lady, she's 85 years old and she's been making Pad Thai for over 45 years. So it's gonna be an honor. Uh, we're gonna go to her restaurant. We're gonna see her make Pad Thai. Feels good to be in the countryside, the rice fields. Okay, we're on our way to go eat Pad Thai. Oh man, the breeze under this mango tree is wonderful. And yeah, it was about an hour and a half drive from central Bangkok. Uh, we are in the province and I think pretty close to the city of Ang Thong. Uh, but we're in the countryside. It's beautiful out here. The breeze, the rice fields are in full green, yellow blossom. Uh, and we should be just a few kilometers down the road should be the restaurant. an amazing location next to a canal of water there's a really old okay there's a modern bridge that you can drive across and there's this ancient old rickety wooden bridge it's so peaceful we got a parking right under this beautiful shade tree and then the whole restaurant is kind of under a shelter with tables I love this style of a restaurant She's a legend, she's over 85 years old and she's still making pad thai. She's cooking at the back of the restaurant using burning only wood, so you get the wood smoky, you can smell the aroma of the fire, the combustion. Uh, but I kind of came around to the back so I could see her from the front where she's cooking. Uh, and she's right in the middle of a batch. She makes it by a whole wok batch, all the noodles, like just like a, like juices and sauces are just like sloshing around. Um, then she only uses duck eggs, so then when she's finishing a Back, she adds on the duck eggs, kind of in the portions, kind of like divvying out the portions. Hopefully we'll see the entire process from the start after she finishes this batch. But just the way she works, like not fast, just methodically, slowly dropping in those duck eggs with one hand, um, sloshing them around, stirring them around, scrambling them into the pad thai noodle sloshy mixture. The rice noodles are first soaked in water um, and then they're fried once. It's dry chili, like dry chili, right? She adds in dry chili as well as uh, hom dang, which are shallots. And that just gives like the, the noodles like their primer. Their prepares them for the real fry, for the real slosh and all of the sauces. Um, and then they go into another pan to be fried again uh, with the eggs, with more sauce, with lard, to give it the final flavor. Okay, she's about to start a fresh new batch. The more I watch her as she makes the pad thai, I don't even know if I would call it stir frying because it's such a it's such a juicy, such a like sloshy mixture of sauces and noodles and like it's so it's so wet. It's a wet fry. She controls the fire because she, she, she also mentioned to me that she only burns uh, wood so that she gets the flame so that she can control the fire. But also kind of like because it's a batch, she cooks it by the batch. It's not like a scorching, 
you get the smokiness from the actual burning of the wood, but not from the, the heat of the wok. Uh, but just the way she has it mastered down, she could, she and again, she could by all means make Pad Thai with her eyes closed. Just the methods, the, the system, the process, which she has developed and practiced for over 45 years and mastered. That is mastery. But then to get her batch started, what she does is I believe she adds in some lard, um, then tosses in the noodles, then a few scoops of a mixture of palm sugar syrup, as well as tamarind sauce, um, and pours that in, and then just kind of sloshes around the noodles in that sauce, in that like caramely syrup, uh, like thickness, um, and that bubbles away, but it's really a matter of mastering the technique and also mastering the fire and the heat because uh, I, I can guarantee that if you don't have experience, if you don't know what you're doing, you'll end up with like a clump, a blob of noodles that will all stick together. Uh, but she keeps the noodles separately. She like knows how to control the fire, um, knows how to control the, uh, the different sauces to pair with the noodles. Um, and then she just kind of works that in uh, uh, like slowly. She works it slowly and then I just love how she drops in the eggs. And then right before serving, what she does is she takes a handful of uh, which are bean sprouts, tosses that on top and just folds it into the noodles just so they slightly wilt under the heat of those noodles uh, and then puts it onto your plate and that's a portion. And I'm sure they get their banana blossoms right from here. Even the green mango, everything is right from here. That is a big banana blossom right there. Used to garnish Pad Thai. There's a little dog underneath the table. Ready? There's two different versions you can get, right? You can just the normal and the pisate. Pisate comes with two eggs. So I got pisate. And I think the, the eggs are both kind of like folded within your noodles. Chopsticks? Eat with chopsticks in? I love these high benches with the tables. Um, but quickly before I start eating, before I taste test, or should I taste test first before I tell you? Yeah, maybe I should taste test right now first before while it's hot and fresh. Uh, but I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Pad Thai, about the history of Pad Thai. And also Pad Thai is not, it's not a dish that I actually eat very often. It is one of the most well-known Thai dishes and it is popular in Thailand as well. Uh, but just because there's so many other dishes and Pad Thai tends to be kind of like on the sweeter side, it's not usually my personal favorite. Uh, but I am very excited to try this Pad Thai. One, because she's such a legend. She she makes only one dish and she like has perfected it. And no matter what, I respect that and I love that. So it is a true honor to be here to taste her plate. Once she dishes out your plate of Pad Thai from the wok, uh, then they sprinkle on a spoonful of crushed peanuts and then a few, um, I thought like sometimes it's chives, but she's using green onions. Wow. Look, the texture of the noodles is amazing. It's so like, they're, they're like elasticy. You could probably like tie something up with them, but at the same time, whoa. That was the little dog balloon. Oh, on. At the same time, they've absorbed just the right amount of that, that makam, that palm sugar, the tamarind, the sauces, the oil. You do taste sweet at first. Pad Thai is always on the sweeter side. Um, but then at the same time, the sweetness kind of mellows out because it's palm sugar. It's not that sharp sugar processed 
uh, sugar, like very sharp sweetness. It's more of a mellow sweetness and the richness of those yolks, those uh, duck yolk eggs. You can see that the sauce is so thick, it just coats onto your chopsticks. It's so thick and sticky. Look my chopsticks real fast. Um, but really quickly, just to tell you a little bit about the history of Pad Thai. Pad Thai is not an ancient dish. It's not a, it previously was not even a traditional dish of Thailand, but it only dates back to the 1930s when the prime minister at that time, uh, he was developing Thailand. He's the one who's responsible for even changing the name to Thailand, Thailand to Thailand. And back in the 1930s, the prime minister, he, uh, his house help made a noodle dish, uh, Goi Tiao. And Goi Tiao is originally rice noodles, originally from China. Uh, which were adapted into Thailand, but his house helper would make a type of kuei tiao that maybe was her own style. Uh, she would fry the noodles, and the prime minister loved the noodles so much that he said, we have to, let's make this into a dish that like unifies, that brings the people of Thailand together. And that's why it's called Pad Thai. Um, that's why it's called stir-fried Thai. Uh, and so that's when, Pad Thai was created originally with Chinese roots, but then he added many different Thai ingredients, protein sources, the eggs, uh, the Thai ingredients like palm sugar, like sour tamarind, um, and then balanced the flavors so that it was sweet, so that it was sour, a little bit spicy. Um, some of the herbs and some of the ingredients that are you can find right in central Thailand. Additionally, um, Batlik was also mentioning that originally a traditional version or an old version of Pad Thai was to be served with mafuang, which is star fruit. Uh, but then after that, when star fruit, when it wasn't the season or when there's no star fruit available, st people started using green mango. So she still serves green mango on the table to eat with your Pad Thai. And now even one step further, most of the time in Bangkok, you don't even find it served with green mango. It's rare. I don't know if I've ever seen it served with green mango, uh, but it's served with just uh, lime slices to squeeze on lime because it's faster, it's easier, it's more sour, it's less expensive. The green mango, that is awesome. And then because I love sourness and also to balance that sweetness, I'll squeeze on lime. In addition to the fresh accompaniments, we've also got some of the seasonings. There's fish sauce. There is extra sugar that you can put on some people. It's already very sweet in my opinion, but some people even add extra sugar. And then the main thing that I want, sprinkle on a little bit of chili flakes bump up the heat and then just kind of stir this around. I want to get some of that green mango for sure in this bite. And then there's lime juice on here, there's chili to balance the flavor. And another reason why noodles, especially soup noodles, but also pad thai, other noodles, are so uh, popular in Thailand is because they're so customizable. So if you like, I mean, that's the reason they give you the different seasonings. If it's not salty enough for you, you can add fish sauce. If it's not sweet enough for you, you can add sugar. If it's not spicy enough for you, Nobody minds if you add a lot of chili. Mm. Oh, with the green mango, it's amazing. Because, yeah, the noodles are so sweet. But then, with that burst of sour green mango, and that kind of like crunch, mm, that just like fully complements the sweetness for me. Then with that spicy, dry chili smokiness at the end, I'm gonna squeeze this with a little more lime just to give it like a sharp, a sharpness of lime. And I'll take a time out to chase with the banana blossom. In Thai it's called huop li. It's also almost mandatory to serve with pad thai. You don't, normally it's actually cooked in different dishes, but this is one of the only dishes where you eat it raw and it's always, available with Pad Thai. Um, it, yeah, it's chalky. It doesn't actually have a lot of flavor. Almost like a slight of milkiness and a little bit of sweetness, but it is kind of like chalky. It's kind of dry. I think, like for me, the benefit is when you're taking a bite of Pad Thai and it's kind of sweet, the banana blossom just kind of like completely like cleanses and then that like rejuvenates your taste buds and then you can take another bite of Pad Thai. And you're like, 
really feel the flavors of the Pad Thai even more exuberantly after taking a bite of the banana blossom. Oh, she's gonna make a new, she's gonna make a new batch. I could eat every bite with an entire like 50-50 ratio of green mango to the noodles. Mm. I think the green mango is what makes it for me. Um, I'm getting down to my last few bites of my first plate, but as I keep on eating it, you can really taste the richness of it. The amount of lard in here, the duck egg yolks. It is rich, it's hearty, it is like, it's like warming. I haven't even had any water yet, but they also use the really old style Thai cups. I think they're made from aluminum um, and it's all self-service at the front. You can serve yourself water. I love these cups too. As I continue to eat it, like you could get the richness of it, that lard, the eggs, the yolks. Uh, it was very good for a plate of Pad Thai. And just the history in that dish, and the history in Balek herself, and how long she's been making it, how she's mastered Pad Thai. But again, Pad Thai, just in general, is not my favorite dish. It is a little too sweet for me to eat regularly. Uh, but that being said, I did really enjoy it. I enjoyed this entire experience, and just getting to taste her Pad Thai that she's been making so long that she's been perfecting for so long. She is a legend of Pad Thai and my utmost respect to her. There, she's so nice as well. She's so welcoming her and it's still completely family run. It's her daughters that also help. And so that was an honor to have this chance to drive here, to come here, to spend time hanging out, to watch her as she methodically, like expertly, again, masteringly prepared that Pad Thai. And then, yeah, that was just a lot of fun and a learning experience for me. So that's it for this video. I'll have all the information in the description box below so you can check out. I'll have the directions on how to get here as well. Uh, and I wanna say a big thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click the little bell icon. Click that bell icon so that you'll get notified of the next video that I publish. Lots more food videos coming. See you on the next video.